This is I Chandra Hakim D Mas Bihar. With your enthusiasm and support, we have now entered the final day of Mas Bihar. Every year in Osmicon, we highlight a current problem to create awareness. Similarly, this year we have chosen the theme Adolescent and Reproductive Health. This topic looks so simple and vague, but in our country, this is the need of the hour. World Health Organization defined adolescence as age between 10 to 19 years. Today, 1.2 billion adolescents stand at crossroads between childhood and adulthood. In India, they constitute 20% of the population. This is the most susceptible age where the emotional status, curiosity, peer pressure play an important role. Drugs, sexually transmitted infections, addictions, teenage pregnancies are on alarming rise. We, as doctors, can make this journey of millions of adolescents better by respecting them and loving them. That is, the second chance in the second decade. Yatra Nariyanti Pujayanti Tatra Ramante Devata, which means where women are worshipped, they recite gods. The true worship of women lies in helping them maintain their good health. But in our country, we are unable to keep up the standards of maternal health. Five women die every hour in India. Our maternal mortality rate is 174 deaths per 1 lakh live births. The major cause of this is not poverty, but its lack of awareness. As doctors, we need to treat the cause treat the disease and not the symptoms and we can do this by spreading awareness. These two problems are like air, always present but we barely notice them. Our guest today is a person who has been internationally acclaimed for his works in adolescent and reproductive health. We are indeed blessed sir, Dr. Shri Patanjali Dev Nair sir to have you in our list. Sir, can you please come on to the dais? A huge round of applause for sir. Sir has done his MBBS. Sir has done his MBBS in this prestigious Asmania Medical College, Diploma in Ophthalmology, Adolescent Medicine and Health, Lausanne University, Switzerland, Diploma in Health Management in London. Sir is presently serving as Regional Advisor of Disability, Injury Prevention and Rehabilitation at WHO SERO. But Sir has come today as a Sexual Health Advisor. Policy Advisor for Health System Strengthening, Integrating in Maternal, Maternal Child and Adolescent Health, Immunization, Sexual Reproductive Health, ARSH, HIV and AIDS Promotion. Sir is the project director and chairman, technical support group, UA, that is the School Life Skills Education Program. Sir is the advisor to Government of India for ARSH, Youth Empowerment, HIV and AIDS programs. Sir has established 2400 teen clubs. Sir has conceptualized and provided support to WIFA, weekly iron folic acid supplementation. And the list can go on and on, but I will not waste any more time. Ladies and gentlemen, a big round of applause to Dr. Shri Patanjali Nehru Nair sir. We are honored to have you here. Over to you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, a um, lot of things have been spoken about me, but the most important thing is to show here that I am a product of this institution. I the joined in 1973, passed out, and then came and did my post-graduation at the U in Ophthalmology also. As Sai has explained to you all, my job brings me in contact with presidents, like prime ministers, health minister. ministers, many other ministers, luminaries so-called celebrities in my day-to-day -day work. But particularly being here today, I feel much much more important than happy than meeting you. There are some residents and that Prime Minister who are my personal friends. Whether it was Maldives where I was posted, or Sri Lanka, or Bhutan where I work. But believe me, this brings me great happiness and honor and I mean it. And it's because largely, I would say, not largely, but maybe totally because of Dr. Pariglavi, 
who first of all gave my name to you all. I, you people would not know about me, the committee would not know about me. And secondly, cajoled me, pleaded with me, threatened me. If you don't come, we'll be very angry. She is my junior, so I could not afford a lady being angry with me. So here I am in front of you. It's largely because of Parimplavi, so let's thank her. I'm going to show this, the next slide please, the next slide. I want you to read this slide very carefully, especially the last slide. And while doing that, I would like to invite my colleague who is sitting at the back to come in the front. But that is the way I'm going to make it interactive. Please come in the front. Even the third fourth row. We are all faculty, we are all special invites. Come over. Who's our seen as controversial? But that is where we are. Today the main discourse is social scientific and nothing is beyond. So my presence here and my discussion here is not to titillate you, not to bring anything dirty, but to discuss the issues because they have relevance and I talk to you how they have the relevance. I have no judgments attached. We welcome any kind of sexual practices. As doctors, we understand there is alternate, there is transgender, there is different way of thinking. We may have religious feelings and political feelings that are different, but as scientists, as doctors, we have no judgments. So I don't judge anybody, and that I want to make it clear, because unless that is made clear, there will be questions about what about homosexuality, what about lesbianism, what are your ideas. My ideas are absolutely clear in the beginning, we don't judge anybody. We see them as a spectrum of behavior in psychiatry, in psychology, and that's where I come from. We are fully inclusive and rights-based, Everybody has equal rights, whether girls or boys, men, women, married, unmarried, sexual, reactive, sexually unactive, atheist, believer in God, anybody, any religion, anything is, no, everybody is totally inclusive and respected. Some areas you will find explicit photographs, so I want to warn all of you, you will see nudity, you will see some photographs, you will laugh at them. They are not to titillate you, they are the scientific photographs, but they are explicit, they are not vulgar. They are clear and they are explicit, so I am going to show you. So that's where I wanted to warn you all, if somebody as a medical student also feels that they cannot take it, it's up to them to be here or not. And that's the last line, that your presence here demonstrates that you understand what I am going to do. Next slide. Here you see, what do you see? You see two children and one of them is looking at the sculpture and looking at the genitals. Child. Curiosity about genitals, about sexuality, about sex is all pervading. It is there in us humans from the beginning. So that's the first thing to show. But that's not only in children. The next slide. It's also seen in adults. You can see here. And this is a recent photograph. This one week old. And there is, as you know, the this youngest of the young ladies coming out of the women. And you see what is happening. Everybody admiring her. So the question of admiration, looking, jigyasa, curiosity is there in amongst us. And that is the whole point of proving this and moving further. So there is nothing wrong, bad, dirty or, or objectionable in our sexual thoughts and behavior. What is objectionable is when I become intrusive on somebody else's body or time, when I, when I end up troubling somebody else, that is objectionable. But to having sexual thought or the feeling is normal and as early as we understand our medical students and doctors, we will be able to understand ourselves better and we will be able to help those human beings who come to us for help. A huge number will come. Next. What happens in adolescence is so many changes at one time. You see, I asked some of you to change the seat and there was a resistance. People are comfortable in that seat. Why is he asking us to come in front? People you know, just change of seat. And here is a human being who is simultaneously going through so many changes. Biological changes, cognitive changes, emotional changes, social changes, and has no help at all. So that's why adolescent behavior is very, very, you know, just both there, also very much very different. You can't understand. Sometimes parents expect you to be adults, and sometimes they expect you to be children. Keep quiet, you don't know anything. Then you have grown up so big, you still don't know what is happening. No. Similarly, there is an impact on their sexuality. If they can't help, the body changes. If a boy can't help seeing his erections, 
or a girl who started getting breast budding and now the breasts are becoming bigger and she doesn't know whether to wear a brazier or not. Imagine what will happen when they think about sexual thoughts. Where is the hell going to come from? How are they going to decide whether this is normal or not normal? Because they have no other yardstick to measure. So they come and talk to the friends and talk to other people. And friends themselves don't know anything. And that's why they are lost out in any area. So imagine all these changes, plus the sexual thoughts, how weird an adolescent looks to us, or how we can look back our, our own self if you remember. I was very weird, I had a lot of problems. That's why I am going to show you some slides what have we made there in the sex education where I am myself 19 years old and my friend Namki Shur is sitting in my class there and Paripravi, my junior, uh, saw that exhibition of the sex education when I was 19 years old. So if I could do it, so can you. We will come to that little later. Next slide. What do you understand by sexuality? Sir, the first one. Behind you, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. What do you understand by sexuality? Quickly, I'm going to come to any one of you. If you raise hands, it's much better. No idea. Very honest answer. Lovely. <laughs> Once again, you hear the next thought, next choice. What do you think? What do you think sexuality could be? Understanding that you have no idea, but take a guess. Emotional behavior change between difference between men and female. Beautiful. I really admire you that you had the courage to say no idea. Sir, ignorance is no crime. But not removing ignorance is a crime. So if you are here, that means you want ignorance to do. I compliment you. Miss, behind you. Or are you here, sir? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ready. What do you think of sexuality? Well, there's sexual preferences. Okay. Go ahead, quickly. So that we can move on. And a lot of, I'm going to come back to you again and again. Yes. Or the interest. Beautiful. Excellent. In the next row. Yes. Pardon me? No idea. No idea. That's the two of you make the similar one. So your next choice. Okay, no idea, but what do you think? If you hear the word sexuality, what, what, what do you think about it? So I think you said no idea. What a beautiful answer you have given. Okay. Let's go to the somewhere in the middle. A any volunteers from this side, that side? Because I'll ask the next question from this side. Yes, yeah, let's come somewhere in the middle. Uh, my, my friend in the green uh, kurta. Yes. Yes. I'm so sorry, I can't know all the 200 names, so excuse me. Beautiful. What else? Something of the answer which this lady gave feelings, does it? Do you want to relate to it in any way? See, women are as it is feeling oriented. Men, boys are. Uh, feeling towards opposite sex. Okay. Beautiful. Very good. Thank you very much. Somebody in the back? Three rows back. Anybody got choice? I just want volunteers to give up the answer. Well done. Quickly. Sir. Very good, the attitude towards that. Anything else you want to add? You really come up with a good answer. You want to add, enlarge upon it? Okay, next slide. Youth want perceptions. Starting with no idea, fuzzy logic. See, we are in our 20s, almost, and we do not know. But that's a very good answer to start with. But we have a huge amount of things. is related to genitals, related to gender, feelings, laws and legislation, which I'm going to the next slide to talk about. We have about it, religious and concern, menstruation, taboos, virginity, marriage, sexual orientation, practices, masturbation, the whole list of this area. But, the reference to the sexual health is usually medical. With medicals, none of us talked about sexual health. None of us talked about prevention of STI, you know, prevention of early pregnancy. We miss out as soon as the word sex and sexuality comes. The whole focus is on the early areas. We forget that the health component added to it. 
and that's where I want to do that. As you saw the first slide, it is not only to sort of share some information with you, but to see that you from today onwards can help people with sexual health issues, problems, you feel capable. With one hour, I cannot do everything, but if I can stimulate your interest in the subject and you learn by yourself and you, do, you can do things, especially my girl colleagues, my women colleagues who are like my daughters here, and my, both my daughters are related to you, so I can have the claim on all of you. The women can do a lot of service in the area of sexual health, especially because our women are totally ignorant. Men and boys still at least know some crude things, girls do not know. Next slide. Sir, spotlight one can you find You can still see me. Okay. Here are the two. Here are the two things which I just got from two days, 10th of August newspaper. And you can see that this is Times of India, 48 hours ago saying, it's sex with minor wife rape. Supreme Court is the And second one, what you can see is Nepal bans isolation of menstruating women. What is happening in many of the countries that the menstruating women will not be allowed in temple or any other places or in the kitchen and Nepal are So sex and laws and legislation are, are held in. And I added this slide just to let people of you also know I've been working very hard. Till the last moment, I've been working and adding on slides and ideas. Next one. What is sexual health? And this is the WHO definition. I have to show you a book I brought in my red bag. It is with somebody. Is there? I own the committee of the WHO on the sexual health guidelines. They can give it from here. No problem. Give it to me. Give it to here. And here it is. And it's from this book that I have got what is the sexual health. And if you read what sexual health, first of the important is relation to sexuality. So it's the WHO is letting us know that sexuality is a very important component. It is nothing, we are not titillating, we are not doing dirty talk. I am not here to discuss dirty talks with you. I have come here with a lot of difficulty. I was not sure whether I will be able to come. As I said, it is entirely important of the curriculum is continuous insistence and encouraging me that you can do it when I have come here. And you are, as I said, I like to encourage you because this is a subject, it touches everybody. Even if you are a surgeon, your patient will have sexual health problem. Even if you are an ophthalmologist like I am, he or she will have sexual health problem. They won't talk to you because they don't know whether how you will respond. So it is us, but we open and say, yeah, we are, this is like another problem. So we are here to help you to assist you. That is what we want from our medical, especially from Uspanian, because this is one knowledge which has produced people in every field who do, do superlatively well. And this is one area we don't have too many people. So my job is to stimulate your interest in the area coming up. So this is sexual health. You can read it, I have to leave the book for the library there. It's on the, on the net. You go to WHO site, sexual health, you will find all these videos there. It's a positive, respectful approach to sexuality and sexual relationship. Pleasure. So pleasure really is very important. It's not that if sex is a duty for a wife to go home. It's very important. Pleasure aspect is there. We have every right to feel pleasurable in life, whether by food or by relationship, clothes, art, film, talking or by sex. Pleasure but safe, pleasure but respectful for the other person also. So the element of pleasure is there with the element of respect for the ones coming up. And rights of all persons. Next. And this is what is sexuality. This I'm going to read for you, take 30 seconds or 40 seconds. A central aspect of human being human throughout life, throughout life. So starting from where to until the death. Throughout life, it encompasses sex, that is including sexual intercourse, gender identity, roles, sexual orientation, eroticism, pleasure, intimacy and reproduction. It's experienced and expressed in thoughts, fantasies, desires, beliefs, attitudes, values, behaviors, practices, roles and relationships. Some of you are able to come up with some answers. But this is so incomprehensible. Sexuality can include all of these dimensions, but all of them are always experienced or expressed. I may have only fantasy in my mind. I, I may not have any sexual partner. Many of our people, human beings, are, are devoid of sexual partners for one reason or another. Many people with disabilities don't get married, don't have sexual partners. And that's the reason many times 
to find people visiting the mission sex worker. There's another interesting area I'll talk about someday, or I'll just touch upon today, that is not all bad. There's a huge amount of, when you work in the area, you see the complexities. If we talk about the sex is a necessity, pleasure is a necessity, and people who don't have factors, what do they do? So think of the question. My religious beliefs, my political beliefs will be different. But as a doctor, you have to understand what a human being is and not put your will. That is also the right. The right of the patient matters first. That a medical practitioner does not put his or her beliefs on the patient. Because I am religious, in my religion it is not allowed. So you don't do it, no. That doctor doesn't say that. Doctor says these are the consequences, it's your choice, but I will still help you. That is the way coming up. That is why I talk about it. Just think of the range of all this area. Is influenced by interaction of biological, psychological, social, economic, political, cultural, legal, historical, religious, and spiritual factors. So it is so complex. That is why what somebody does in uh, the public display of affection, PDA in Europe, is not very well accepted in India. Because the cultural factors, political factors are different. If abroad I am seen holding hands with my friend going like this, I am likely to be considered as a homosexual. So they, they become very, you know, they are amazed when the Americans come to India and see boys and men going arm in arm. They just cannot wait because in America very few people go do this for the fear that I am judged. Here we go to his women for the fear that I may be thought that they are a, a good kind of person. It's different. But which is good, which is bad? Neither. It is, it is the choice because it is influenced by these factors. So we don't judge. We just look, we understand, we help, we don't judge. Next. Okay, for this side. In your opinion, how do adolescents express or experience sexuality? I'll start from the back now. My friends who are talking to each other, can I have a question for you? In the white shirt? Yeah, the last four. Answer to this question. Second thing, yeah, you. The white shirt. I got you talking. Answer to this question. How do adolescents feel sexuality? How do they experience sex? Your friend with the red journey. Miss? No idea. No idea. That's a good answer, but that doesn't leave you. After the no idea one, what is some idea? What do you think they experience sexuality? Exchange of love letters? Looking, I can help you a little. How do people express their sexual erotic thoughts? Especially young people. No? Was in front of you? Sir? Yes, you? Kaise karte hai bhai? Kabhi kuch nahi kiya hai hoon maan. That doesn't mean when you answer me, it means you have done that. But don't worry. That you don't worry. Answer. We love you, dekhti hai. How do people express this sexual thought, feeling, sexuality? Or experience them inside? What happens when somebody looks at a so-called a very beautiful girl? Kya hoon ta usko? Love. I have it. How do they express love? What a beautiful answer. You really come right on the middle of the topic, man. I like it. You should be sitting here. Huh? What happens in love? What happens in love? My heart is going faster and faster, you know? So you have to help me. You have films in people now, what happens in love? Come on, come on. I am not going to leave you just like that. The earlier you answer, the easier it will be. I'm an old hand at giving people answer questions. Chapandi? Eight lines to follow me, yeah? Okay, the lady in front of you. You choose. So they can blame you later, not me. Okay, ma'am. What happens in Love or what happens? How do I use it? Express. You know, your reputation at stake. When I went upstairs, you get epigenetics, radiation, 
the girls and boys were talking so well. But in this hall, if you don't talk, then your reputation is making, including mine. What is this? I guess we express our feelings. Yeah. How? How do they express? Not you. How do they express? Huh? What happens when somebody admires another person? What do they do? Very good, you are on the right leg. What is? A blind kiss, baby. Okay. I'm looking here now. Okay. I'm here with you. You are doing very well in your area, so let's see answer. You answer here. Hmm. Then, Quickly, then I can move on with my slides. How do you think the young people experience or express sexuality? They feel happy for nothing, they start blushing. <laughs> Very good, what else? Beautiful. Mm. Something little beyond that. Come to the core areas, your doctors. What else do they do? There is a volunteer, I am so happy. Big word. Seduce. Seduce? Wow. You understand the meaning? Yeah. Good. What else? Very good. Okay. What else? Experimentation. How nice. How do they experiment? Beautiful. Ma'am, continue. Just go ahead. You're very good. Peer pressure. So what do they do in peer pressure? Touching? Or trying to touch? Elbow testing? <laughs> what else? My daughters have experienced elbow testing and so could have you all the areas. I have no problems in doing that. This is a word we used 50 years ago in this medical college. You know the boys who come and try to touch a girl by just moving the elbow. I'm a girl, some secrets, but I can talk about that. Good, very good. Good, let you do the things. Substance abuse. Okay, that's also related to sexuality. Anybody else volunteer? Yes, there's a volunteer here also. Good. Very good. Yes, ma'am. Sir, now when you have social media, when you have pen. Pen, pen. Okay. What else? Uh, stalking. Yeah, I have a lot of people who are bored. Okay. Are you friend request? Nothing else. Nothing beyond it. Holding hands. Ankh matakka. Huh? Looking at each other for long times. Writing poetry. Krishna, what are you asking? Very beloved, you become very boring, I must say. Because you're not like this. In our days, much more romantic thoughts going on. Yeah, very good. Yes, ma'am. Uh, Sir, so you have said that you have to have a good time with your friends. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Uh, so, you know, what is your advice for the young people who are not able to have sexual intercourse with their partners? Very good. Very good. Some of you may be shy, and that is my whole point. This I spent five minutes on this question today. I'm not here to care all about sexuality. I'm here to make you feel comfortable with it. So if you don't say that they try to kiss, they try to hold hands, you said seduce, I'm very good. You said a big word. Yes, you do that. It's a normal thing that people want to bend each other even as adversaries. And we have to have that's why the girls, the boys need to have the understanding how to say no. That if they don't want it, they say no. If they want to yes, then they say yes. But they have precautions. So you have brought about the subject very really open, very really nice. But a long list of things. What is the meaning of cottage? Anybody? Frottage. Nobody? Standing near a person and trying to rub themselves on the person, which they do in the buses all the time. Is it wrong? How many have got friends? Let me tell you when girls go to boys. Don't you think only the boys go to the girls. I have myself experienced it as a boy. <laughs> yeah, it's very common. At that time I felt very shy and very disturbed. Later I felt what fool, what a fool I am. I'm getting such clear good signals. I did not utilize them, wasted it totally. I've been a boy like that from the beginning, so don't worry. So you could get it. So all of this lady is coming up. These are taken from a book called The Human Sexuality by John Bancroft. I am going to quote him again and again. It's there in your library. Or at least it used to be there. That used to be the volume, uh, uh, you know, 2. 
and now he has just been another edition. Next. It all begins in adolescence. Here you are, whether it's in using or is not a commercial sex worker. And here we have from yesterday's